Hello, hello, hello. Welcome or welcome back to My Peace is Priceless. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you're having an amazing day. If not, there's still some hours left in the day to turn that around. Um, I want to thank you for joining me. I know I've been away for quite some time. Back in July, I had told you all that um, I would be away in the month of August for, for a couple of weeks. So I'm back and I'll, um, I may speak more um, in future videos about that. But for now today, we're going to be talking about credit, credit scores, credit histories, credit cards, and credit limits. Um, as you all know, I am an avid credit card user. Um, I also advocate that if you know that you're not responsible with making your your monthly payments, at minimum, your minimum monthly payments, you should not use your credit cards because it can get you in a world of debt. Um, speaking of which, I have been in debt three times with my credit cards, not because I was spending frivolously, but because I needed them at a, as a means to supplement income in the past. So, um, the first time that I attempted to get, not attempted, but that I did get out of credit card debt, I used a debt repair company, which I'm not going to mention their name, but for some reason, I don't think they're in existence anymore. I should have checked just for curiosity to see if they're still around. And what a credit repair company does is they negotiate on your behalf with your creditors to try to lower down your um, credit obligation. So, so let's say if you have a $1,000 credit, maybe they'll can see if they can knock down to $300 um, and or um, get your minimum payments knocked down or possibly interest um, knocked off. So, and in addition to that, you have to pay a small fee to the, the company. Um, I did clear my debt, but it wasn't through the company ultimately. I withheld my obligation with them. So let's just say I had a contract of 12 months, um, but after the 12 months was over, I did not renew it. And I just um, paid the, the balance of my credit that I owed the old fashioned way one card at a time. Um, for me, I didn't feel it was beneficial because the payments or the minimum payments were just too small and I felt I would have been paying forever. The second and third time that I got myself in credit card debt, I utilized the snowball method um, to get me out of debt and since I've been out of credit card debt which was the last time I believe uh, what are we in 2023 I think I've been out of credit card debt for going on three years now possibly um, I've been you know keeping my cards current and up to date ever since and so I'm very pleased with myself about that because ultimately I do have a goal to um, purchase some property in, in the future. Um, so with that being said, that brings me to what's on this piece of paper. So as you all know, I um, am very adamant when I do use my cards that I pay them immediately. Um, as soon as that uh, purchase is posted to my card i i try to pay that off in full no less than half of what um the purchase was so if i swiped my card to buy something for 500 dollars, at minimum i'm paying 250 dollars in the next two to three days once that um, charge is posted to the card if not in full and that I, that I will recommend to people that when you uh, know that you're going to use your card, at least have half of the amount 
on hand so you can immediately um, pay it off um, as soon as possible, definitely before the statement billing date, um, you know, because you want to show that you're responsible in paying your credit cards off and that will benefit you and ultimately increase your score. So, so that's, that's how I utilize my cards. Um, so I'm going to turn this over now and I'm going to show you my credit history from 2021 to present. Now I use credit karma as one form of tracking my, my credit history, just to make sure what my credit score is, although that is not an accurate um, score. It's a mirror, um, but it is very close to when you get your credit uh, ran for purchasing a home or maybe a vehicle. It may be between 15 and 20 points off from the actual um, score, which I believe is by FICO, but it gives you a uh, wiggle room to know the ballpark that you're in. So Credit Karma is one of the vehicles that I use to constantly um, check the status of my credit. Also, I use it to make sure there's no derogatory um, information on there and everything that is on my um, credit report is accurate and current. Now, so when I do check, and I check quite often, I usually screenshot the scores, um, you know, just to see my progress. Even though I believe um, you can go to history and they may have it, I'm not 100% sure about that. So these are the scores that I could find in my photo gallery. I have deleted a lot of pictures and things in my gallery, so I don't have... Um, as many as I used to. So going back in 2021, March 2021 to be exact, my credit score was 643. And again, as I stated a few minutes ago, um, about three years ago, I was in you know credit card debt again. So this was when I was building my way back to getting myself out of debt. Um, I think around this time I had approximately $18,000 in, in credit card debt. And um, at the beginning of that, my credit score was in the high fives. I want to say it was like 564 or between 564 and 584. Um, so, yeah, so I had definitely worked my way up and it was getting it was getting there. So this. Uh, 643, I believe, is in the fair category. Now we're jumping into 2022, and we have the TransUnion and the Equifax uh, scores. Now, Credit Karma only uses these two. I believe back in the day, they also um, used to show what the um, Experian score was, but they no longer do that. So in January of 2022, my TransUnion score was 689 and Equifax was 684. In April, it went up to 723 and Equifax also 723. I should have indicated how much the points increased, but I wasn't thinking at the time when I, I drafted this up. September, there wasn't that much movement and I'm pretty sure this is because I really wasn't utilizing the cards. So there wasn't anything to really keep track of other than, you know, there weren't any derogatory uh, state um, activity. So it was uh, 725 and 725 in September. And then towards the end of the year, there was a jump. So there was some credit card utilization and it was 742 for TransUnion and 742 for Equifax. Now, I also want to state that when you're using your credit cards, you should always try to use between 10% to 30% of your credit limit. So if you have $100 
worth of credit limit, you should use between $10 and $30. I know that might sound a little crazy, like I have a whole $100 to use, but they don't want to see that. Dad, she needs to use her whole $100. <laughs> you know, um, so you should use no more than 30% of what your um, credit line is so that they know that, um, you know, it's, it, you don't, you're not relying on the credit, if you will. I mean, and now again, if you're making a big purchase or whatever, and it calls for that, then so be it. But again, you should definitely have at least half of the amount to immediately pay it off. So moving forward, now we're in 2023. And um, in April, so we jumped up eight points. Well, I'm sure there was probably some, some up and down movement, but again, I, I don't know where the rest of my pictures are. And I, and I am gonna try to um, put pictures up either at, towards the end or throughout um, the video so you can see um, so in April it was 750 and it was 750 for both in June it was TransUnion 762 Equifax 764 and currently in August TransUnion 776 and Equifax 777 um, and I'll explain what this asterisk are for. Now, let me also state something as well. At my previous job, I used to work alongside um, my coworker. She also was a real estate agent. And we were talking about, you know, home ownerships and, and things like that. Because again, you know, oops, sorry. Um, again, I eventually want to purchase a home. And she indicated to me that a credit score between 680 and 750 all means the same. It's treated just the same. So a person that walks in with a credit score of 680 and a person that walks in the door looking for a home or to buy something for 750, they're pretty much going to get the same APRs and things like that. So I found that very interesting. So of course that intrigued me. So I'm like, okay, well, I definitely want to get past 650 because I want to get the best rates as possible. So seeing that um, I've hit that benchmark and once you pass 650, you're in the excellent category. So um, I'm excited that I'm, I'm past that. And again, this is not the exact figures actually. If I was to get my credit score ran right now to buy something, um, it'll probably hot. I'm sorry, it'll probably be higher than this because this happened to me once before, um, several years ago, uh, for a milestone birthday. I was when I was living in New York. I was looking to purchase um, a co-op, and so I did do go through the um, initial steps of getting pre-approved and everything. So. At the time, my credit score had said 724, I believe, on Credit Union. I mean, on Credit Karma. And when the lady at the bank contacted me after running my credit, my actual um, score was 764. So again, most likely, this is higher than um, what Credit Karma is indicating. But we're just going to go by this for now. So, which leads me to the next um, category, which is the, oops, I'm sorry, <laughs> which is the credit line increase. So, if you have credit cards, I'm, qu I'm quite sure that you'll get emails um, quite often encouraging you to call them or let you know that at any time you can call to request um, a line of credit increase. Now, it's not guaranteed that you'll get approved, but they're always encouraging you and letting you know that you can always call and, and ask for one. Some indicate that no hard um, inquiries will, will go towards your or go against your credit history, and some say um, it'll just be a soft inquiry, but, and some say, um, there won't be any any indication on your credit score 
I never utilize, well, let me see, let me not say that. In the past, only once, I have called one of my credit card um, providers and asked for a credit card increase. And that was, again, when my credit was horrible. Um, and I had just got one of my, because I have two Capital One cards, my first Capital One cards, they first gave me an increase of $300. <laughs> And after six months, after pay, making timely payments, um, I said, let me try my hand for, um, to ask for an increase. And they denied me and they said, check back in another year. And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Now, within a year, they just automatically increased my credit score from the $300 to $1,000. So at that point, I said, oh, okay. I mean, because they're constantly monitoring to see how you're, 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 you're utilizing your card. So I said, okay, they're watching me. And as long as I maintain, excuse me, a good status, they'll increase my line of credit on their own. It may not be when I want it, but they'll do it. So from that moment on, I was like, yeah, no need for me to call. So I've been, I've been going along those same lines ever since. So with that being said, um, I have two city card credit cards. And on September 20, not, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> on July 20th, I got an email, as it says right here, let me push it up. Well, first let me say, um, my credit card at the time was $4,500. On September, oh, why well, I keep on saying September? On July 20th, I got an email indicating that um, they're requesting information confirmation, specifically my income, so I could be considered for a line of credit. As you can see here, this is when I got the email, and that was on the on the 720. Um, I I ignored it like I always do. I deleted it, and I, again, like I said, I'll post it up here the email, and then 10 days later exactly i got an email saying congratulations because of my res um, being responsible with my credit card utilage i got an increase of fifteen hundred dollars so now my line of credit has increased fifteen hundred dollars and now that card has a six thousand dollar credit limit to it so the purpose of this video is basically to say if you have credit cards, please just be responsible with your usage. Um, and as long as you do that, it can definitely benefit you in the long run. In the long run, if you're looking to purchase or just in general, um, it's always good to 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 main your credit because you never know there may be a time when you need to use it. Um, they say cash is king, but credit is queen. So I kind of live by that. And I definitely want to have my king and queen um, side by side. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I just wanted to um, let you all get a, a glimpse of that. Because when I saw the email, I said, oh, this is something I should share on my channel. I thought this would be interesting to share with you all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, I want to state that... Um, we're in August and I didn't make my $500, $500, 500 subscriber um, mark, but that's okay. I'm not giving up. I know I've been away, so that probably has a lot to do with it. But again, for all my existing subscribers, thank you for sticking with me. Um, I know I will get there. And um, what else? Yeah. I'm back, <laughs> but again, I will talk about that more in uh, future videos, and I'm happy to be back. I have a lot of catching up to do on videos that I need to watch because while I was away, not only was I not recording, but I wasn't watching YouTube either. I had so much things to do that um, sitting down to watch pretty much anything wasn't really an option, but I'm back. I'm trying to get back in the swing of things and get into a routine as well. So until the next video, you know what to do. Continue budgeting.
Later.